philosophy. Mark has got his calves out. Yeah, dude. <laughs> I, yeah, these are they're very easy. Yeah. If you've ever seen Marcus's calves, and I hope that you have, but uh, <laughs> they're it's like the eighth wonder of the world. Yeah, they're pretty. They're pretty impressive. Yeah, uh, I've it's I've had standing. I had uh, the wrestler Hulk Hogan. Oh yeah, stop me and go. Wow, brother, you got, <laughs> you got some, you got some big calves, your brother. He really did. I just, I just, nah, I was in his. Uh, he has a Hulk Hogan beach store in Orlando, and I didn't know he was there. Yeah, I just, I just, I had, I had some time to kill, and I just. One of the things I like to do when I'm on the road doing shows, I think I talked about this before, is like I like to visit things. Yeah, you go, go, go to things, yeah. go to thrift stores, go, to, you know, and especially if it's like doesn't really cost much or you know, it's just like something to do, you know. Yeah, yeah. And inside the, I've been there before, but inside the Hulk Hogan Beach store, in the middle, they have like a wrestling ring, kind of set up, and you can like you can take pictures there, and it's like set up a certain way, and then they got like life size. Uh, almost like a mannequin busts, not even busts, like a whole side, whole, whole, a whole Hulk Hogan when he was Thunder Lips from Rocky Three, when he was <laughs> whole, like red and yellow Hulk Hogan, when he was Hollywood Hogan with the NWO. They have those, and they got like you could buy, you could buy stuff of his, like uh, belts and stuff like a boa. that. Boa, yeah, you, yeah, you could buy boas actually. He's got That's a sweet. boa, yeah. And I, I came there, and I didn't know he was in the shop. He sells vitamins. Yeah. I, <laughs> I wonder if he does. I, don't, I never really took a look. Take it, your vitamins. Remember? It was for me. It was like a sensory overlo- overload yeah. as a wrestling fan. So I'm in there and I'm like shaking the ropes in in the little wrestling ring, and then it, I hear a, a door is like, oh T- Terry, and they uh, that's his real name, Terry Balea. Yeah. And so mm-hmm. I was like, what? And I turn around, and I guess it was like I was like I had like one leg propped on something. And he goes, oh, hey, brother. He's like, whoa, you, you got some big old calves, your brother. <laughs> like, and, then, and I was like. Well, there you have it. I mean, yeah. they're Hulk Hogan stamp certified. Yeah, Hulk Hogan. You know? Yeah, Hulk, if Hogan says Hogan they're big. Certain. Yeah. He's, he's got his, uh, what does he say? 24-inch pythons? 24-inch pythons. I got, I got the, the, I have the equivalent of his pythons in my leg. They're generally, like, they're giant, they're giant calves. It's funny. Yeah, they're, they're unbelievable. Yeah. They're tumors. Good uh, for you. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're t- <laughs> They look um, like, uh, bowling pins. But those, those calves got put to work. Um, you ever, you ever, you, you were there for my, uh, surprise party last year. Yeah. Um, yeah. You're just walked in and rain like, dogs yeah walked in and and you're just like what the f-? that's what happened this weekend i uh, agreed to help move or no i agreed to help utilize my muscles for something yeah you said it, you received a text a text before i i, I so I, I was this this weekend i was in orlando performing at the orlando funny bone Hell and yeah! Prior, it was last minute plans because my original shows, both my shows last week got canceled. Uh-huh. So I had no shows, and then within a day, I had a whole weekend. I was like, "Cool, this worked out." And I hadn't been in Orlando in a minute, you know, so it was kind of cool. And um, prior to that, I got a text from my my uh, sister in law, who's been very helpful with a bunch of stuff lately. I got a lot of stuff going on in my world. We'll talk about that on another episode. But um, she's like, "Hey, can." Uh, are, are you going to be back Sunday? And I was like, yes, uh, cool. Uh, are you, cause we could use your muscles for something. That's it. And I was like, yeah, gotcha bet or word or whatever fucking phrase I use. You back. said all that. I, yeah, 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 yeah. I, <laughs> I, I, I say word up or whatever. I, I use these <laughs> old said. antiquated <laughs> phrases and shit. And, uh, yeah. And I didn't think anything of it. I went to, went to Orlando, uh, prior to that, I bit my tongue really bad. Yeah. And so, yeah, I had to put like canker sore That's stuff. The worst. Yeah. And, and I was talking weird. I'm still kind of am. Yeah. I'm a little more. I've I've been able to work around the 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 injury or whatever. But I had I had to like put biotin or not biotin, the, some mouthwash shit and stuff. So it, it was just, it was just a lot of that stuff. Did the weekend. It was fun. I got I, uh, linked up with some uh, friends I hadn't seen in a minute. Nice. Yeah, I went to a brunch spot. Dude, okay. I don't know if you... Have you ever done a soft opening of a restaurant? Uh, yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, not many. Just, like, once or twice. Okay. And so, it was, like, you know, small local places. I didn't know a soft opening meant... Usually, it's a soft opening. If you did a soft opening, it was someone that worked there or someone affiliated with it probably invited you. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And you go there, you order the food, and I didn't know this. It's fucking free. Yeah. You didn't pay for anything. Yeah, because they're like they're trying. They're like they're almost like testing out running the restaurant, and yeah. they have like friends and family there just to be like. They're just like working out the kinks and like just seeing how it runs. I had no clue. I was starving. And sometimes the food, like sometimes they'll do food and they'll change it. Like, you know, sometimes you go to a soft opening and they, the food, you'll be like, I love this. And then it opens and then they're like, it's gone. Yeah. 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 You know, well, because they realize that the uh, logistics of getting, yeah, that whatever it was. Yeah. Well, I had no clue. I, I was, uh, like I said, I linked up with my friends and I hadn't seen them in Chicken a minute. Chicken oysters. That's a good. Chicken oysters? You know what a chicken oyster? No fucking no. So if you take a rotisserie chicken, which everyone has access to, yeah, and you flip it over uh, to the flat side, you yeah, know, not the breast side up, the flat side, and then underneath the, uh, I forget if it's the wings or the no, the, it's the fucking leg. I know what you're talking about that soft spongy, that little. Yeah, that I eat those little, all the time. I love those. That's the what they call thing, those. They call it a chicken oyster. It's supposed to be like the filet mignon of the chicken. That's supposed to be like the best bite of meat on chicken those two little things i fucking love those and there was a restaurant in the beach town that i lived in and they had as an appetizer fried chicken oysters so Jesus that, Christ. and they were just short-lived because like sourcing just those little <laughs> yeah <know? laughs> you know chickens you gotta go through yeah you're just a whole ki- killing whole chickens for dude, a, little a whole rotisserie chicken yeah just, yeah but those are fun if you don't know what that is and you're listening. Get a rotisserie chicken and just start poking around on the bottom. Yeah, usually it's at the it's at the hip joint. Yeah, of the leg and the uh, the co- like the leg quarter. Yeah, when you snap the leg, it's at the hip joint. And they're just most on... bu- most butchers fucking cut it. <laughs> yeah, That's yeah. Uh huh. They yeah. probably take it and eat it. Yeah, probably bastards. Sli- yeah, God, so good. God, I want to be a butcher. Damn, I didn't know that was the name of that, <laughs> dude. Yeah, fuck. That's what I've heard. I don't know. Maybe. Who knows? But so I was, uh, you know, I was like, cool. Uh, you know, we can go get breakfast or brunch. We can go get brunch <coughs> and I can hang out with a little bit more with my friends. Yeah. I hadn't seen in quite some time. They're very supportive of everything I do. Uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the boyfriend, Gene, uh, he was on the the show The Floor on Fox. Oh yeah, that's your buddy. Who yeah. Was on that? Okay, you're yeah, telling he was, me about he's that. Like, I think he has the most wins in in that show history so far. Okay. I mean, it's only one season so far, but like, yeah, you said he did really well. Yeah, he was crushing it. He was crushing it. So yeah, it was what so, it, what channel was it on? A uh, Fox. Fox. Uh, the, the Floor. Uh, the, the Floor. Okay. With uh, Rob Lowe as the host. Oh cool. Yeah, and so I was hanging. God, out with he's him. so good in Tommy Boy. Oh dude, yeah, he's the best. Uh, he's such he, he's such a good fucking asshole in that yeah. movie. <laughs> Damn, dude. Um, so yeah, so I was like, just just happy to hear about that story because I didn't haven't really talked to him since he was on it. Yeah, or uh, yeah, since he was on it, I still I saw a social media post, but it's not the same thing. And um, we go there, and I'm starving. I'm fucking hungry, and I order a big meal, and I'm like, you know, I'm, you know, cool. And then the check just never comes, and I'm like, what the fuck is this? I'm like, uh, like they're talking, but I'm, I'm like, where's this check coming? And then, um, and then, uh, I, I heard them say, Oh, just leave a tip. Just leave a tip. I'm like, I was like, the, uh, the check never came. And they're like, Oh, it's not coming. And I was like, What do you mean? They're like, Oh, you, they don't charge you for soft openings. You just leave a tip and you leave a review. That's pretty much, you know, because it, like you said, they cold, they, they basically cold run what the restaurant's going to be like. Yeah. You know, because they're, I think they, Open Monday, actually, officially. Oh, nice. Yeah. What's the name of the place? Uh, it's um, fuck. Uh, oh, Eggs Up Cafe, I think. Okay. In, in uh, in Winter Haven or Winter fuck uh, Winter Garden. That's what was it was. The, was the uh, food good? Food was good. Food yeah. was good. The only thing I didn't really care for was the the French toast. The the French toast was like it tastes like a French like a cinnamon uh, um swirl bread. Mm-hmm. And they normally dip it in batter, but I, they I think they did a, like a light batter because this one this one's oh, one yeah. place is like that's like Gotta they, go they heavy serve on the batter. Yeah, they serve they serve breakfast brunch and stuff, but they're also very health conscious. I could tell. Oh yeah, yeah. Now that that I like crisp bacon. Yeah, like I that's, that's something I got from Chris Buck. He like he would order. He would, the way he would order bacon from like places would like, hey, I want my bacon incredibly crisp, scorched earth. You know, he would like, Is that he like would, Hardee's. <laughs> yeah, and 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 he would say it like that because then like the more he 
the more he emphasized how crisp he would actually get closer to what it was. Yeah. Because a lot of times they would like if he's like, "Hey, I want crisp bacon," it would still be soft. So he'd be like, "I want it fucking burnt," you know. And there is that like gray, gray or not gray areas. Uh, that is the right term, but there's this area right before completely burnt. Yeah. That is really good, and it's like as deep as you could take bacon. Yeah. And it has an incredible crisp. You know what I'm talking it's about? Good, Crumbles. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's good. It's good when you're eating it by itself. Yeah. Not good when you're trying to make a sandwich out. Yeah, because it. it just it just shatters. Crumbles, like, yeah. yeah. And then now you, you have like a fucking, tiny bit of give with fucking a sandwich. bacon shards and, and loose yeah, in a yeah, sandwich, yeah. Mm-hmm. cutting the roof of your mouth. Up. And then burnt bacon on eggs will take a you know burnt bacon overpowers. Oh yeah. So yeah. you really gotta like get that deep mahogany. Yeah. It's a very sh- small window though. Yeah. So it was. Um, so I had a cool weekend. Had a fun weekend, and then I I get home real late because it was like traffic and. Uh, uh, road road work and then there was accidents oh yeah so so i get home like early in the morning and i go to bed i get, as soon as i get up I, I wake up to a text to like hey we're dropping the kids off we're gonna pick up the truck now i'm like truck <laughs> oh fuck truck that's not good that doesn't and this good. is you agreed to yeah yeah i heard day. to it a couple of days ago and so I'm like, okay, what's the problem? Well, did you guy? mention what they said? They said they needed muscle. Yeah. They needed your muscle. Yeah. I just figured. Because when you said that, I immediately thought like they need you to come over because there's like a fight happening. Oh, oh, oh. That's oh, but not like two meant. days ahead of time. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Unless it's like a UFC fight. We <laughs> scheduled in a neighborhood we had, rumble. We got to choke out this Brazilian guy. Uh, <laughs> he's really good. Yeah. He's so good. <laughs> we need you. We need you now. Uh, uh, so I was like, okay, it's probably like a big item and they need me to put it in a truck. And we get there and it, it's these like luxury townhomes that are like two stories. But then like the driveway has stairs that leads to the main house. And then there's another story. So it's technically three stories. And uh, we moved an entire, pretty much an entire bedroom. Uh, uh, they got a purple mattress added to the deal. Is that heavy? A purple, or It's heavy as fuck. And it's yeah. also really expensive. Yeah. A purple mattress. Like, uh, I think it was a queen. A uh, queen purple mattress is like several thousand dollars. Jeez. And they got it like... It was this is uh, now knowing knowing the deal. Why do they have such nice stuff and they can't hire movers? Oh, so here's the deal. Here's, here's <laughs> I was, I was going to get to that. Yeah, why they were jumping all over this like this whole thing. So the, this so pay, basically the townhome was owned by a, a guy who was he had his medical degree and he had his uh, his bar. Yeah, like he was a lawyer and a and a doctor. Yeah. Um. And I, I guess he got sick, possibly cancer, passed away. His best friend was basically the executor of this estate to clear it out it's for movers. Some are some are uh, for, for people buying it. I mean, someone bought it, so they got every pretty much everything uh, that wasn't going to stay. Because the people that bought it were like, "Can we keep some of this stuff? We don't want to get rid of everything." Yeah. And they went through and they're like, "We'll take that. We'll take that." So everything that was staying had like uh post-it notes everything that w- could be sold or given away had blue tape on it mm. and so then he posted in a uh, facebook marketplace everything in these these pictures blah 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 it's gotta go don't uh th- i'm not even worried about pay if you have a truck grab it wow and it was an uh, entire queen bed and frame and all that uh, two dresser drawers, uh, a, a attachment on top of one of the drawers that made it like an armoire of some sort. Mm. Um, then a kitchen table, kitchen chairs, a bunch of speakers, and then a bunch of miscellaneous other shit. And it filled a uh, back of a mid-sized U-Haul and the back of their minivan wow. full of shit. <laughs> and it was all most of that was at least at least two flights of stairs <laughs> at the least. The mattress, the heaviest thing there, all the way to the top upstairs bedroom. And then we had to figure out a way to get it downstairs. Ugh. And then the way we carried it down the stairs wouldn't allow us to put it into the uh, moving van because we had already filled up the van. Oh, so my we God. Had a, un, uh, we had to basically. Uh, Isn't moving the worst? It sucks. I just sucks. get rather get rid of stuff. It sucks. It was it was it was one of those things it was like a rock and a hard place because it's like. 
everything that 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 that, that guy owned was nice it was yeah. like really nice i don't know where he i don't know where night where people buy nice furniture because i buy shit from the thrift store you know like it's um yeah well you know there's such a range with furniture yeah uh, there's like real discount like kelly kelly and i uh we get furniture from we bought stuff here in jacksonville like that couch out there that you fell asleep on yeah yeah <laughs> that was a comfortable hey, fucking sleep. couch dude uh that's from like this place in orange park and it like from the outside it looks like a place that like you'd get robbed in you know (laughs) it looks so terrible but yeah yeah that's what a lot of furniture places look like but i remember we went to one in north carolina which is like a popular furniture area and it was like this big one yeah we went into the showroom and the the, it would be like a couch like just this couch you know and it would be like thirty two thousand dollars and we were like we were laughing and we Went to a salesperson and we were like, where's like the lower price stuff? And they're like, you need to go to our discount, <laughs> our discount place. It's up, it's up yeah. the road and it was like a mile away and it was like a barn. <laughs> and it was just oh like couches lined up. Yeah. And we were looking at them. They were still way too much money. Oh, yeah. We were like, we can't afford the discount. <laughs> well, that, well that's, that's when you know when the place is upscale, when you're like, hey, you know where the, like, the discount and stuff are? You need to leave. You need to get out of this building. <laughs> you need to ex- exit here. It's yeah, like, that's like me walking into like the Louis Vuitton store yeah. or something like that. You know. Well, yeah, it's just it's stupid. And a lot of it... Um, Modern furniture is mostly shit, but if you get old stuff, if you find old stuff on like marketplace, yeah. you find an old lady because the old furniture, old furniture is all like real wood, yeah, well made. That'll last forever. It's these heavy chairs, f- fuck, though, to move. are from these are forty year old chairs. These two oh. blue ones, damn dude. This is like three years or four or five years old. Right, we want to get rid of this and just yeah. keep those. But yeah, this is gonna be this is gonna be a bitch to move. Just by looking at it. Yeah. Well, yeah. the back, um, the back pulls off the back thing. Back. Oh shit. Okay. So you could just. Uh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh fuck. It makes it easy. Damn, dude. But uh, yeah. So, yeah. Me, me and my brother. I and I didn't because I just woke up and headed over there. Normally, when I'm helping someone move stuff. Yeah, that's a terrible situation when you show up and you realize how much. Yeah. Well, usually I prep my body to. Yeah, you ha- you kind of like want to have like, an idea. I stretch, I foam roll, I do the whole nine. Yeah, um, because I'm like I'm getting older, dude. I can't just j- and I it, it that day showed my age so so well. It highlighted how old I've gotten because <laughs> there was a point in time where I could have bulldogged all that shit into that truck by yeah, myself, yeah. probably. Yeah, that yeah. whole mattress probably by myself at one point. Um, you know, and it, and it, it, what made it dip more difficult too was the they. they uh, prior to his death, he had repainted everything. Yeah, and so we didn't want to scratch or scuff or do anything to the walls. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was one funny point. Uh, we were me and my brother were uh, taking a break, and we were taking a look at this uh, sound system speaker thing that the guy was like, "Take it, just take it, take it off our hands." And um, I went to like move something, and my forehead touched the wall, and it left like a fucking grease spot. <laughs> <laughs> it looked like a grease. It looked like I don't know if you ever seen Coming to America. Yeah, yeah. It looked like the Soul, soul Glow grease spot. Oh my and I even started singing. I was like, "Just let your soul go." go. <laughs> yeah, you know, fucking. Dude, oh me and my, my brother were laughing, and the guy had no clue what we were laughing about. And I was like standing in front of it because I didn't want him to see the fucking grease spot. Dude, <laughs> it was like a small dab, but like I, I will leave. I've left many a grease spots, like touching my forehead to glass or something. Like oh that, god, or, like, it's the worst. I did that. So I had a, you just reminded me not to interrupt you, but uh, I just did something that reminded me of my age. Yeah. Just the other day. Like, yeah. Uh, the door uh, to my bedroom or the garage, or some door was like propped half open. Yeah. And I just stepped sideways into it. And I just like my back, like uh, <laughs> my back was like messed up for the rest of the night. Holy shit. I had to like sleep it off. I was fine the next day. Yeah. But I was like, I just bumped into something and I, I was like put out of whack. <laughs> oh my like, God. Uh, it's amazing. Yeah. Getting old is great. <laughs> um, yeah. That's moving is tough is really tough. Uh, well, before you go back and do you have more, you have more on yours? Uh, no, I mean, it was, it, and when we, when we, uh, oh, and then this is what made it worse. Um, 
at one point we were like, oh, crap. It's hot, t-? too. Yeah, it's hot. And then it was like, what time is it this time? Oh, when's the truck got to be back this time? Oh, no. Oh, now we have a time frame oh, that we, yeah. have to work, we have to try to beat. <clears throat> yeah. And it became like this challenge. Time. So we like, we finally, me and my brother finally just muzzled this mattress into the fucking truck. And then uh, I had to tie it down because the way the truck, I mean, the way the bed, uh, the the bed was, if it's if it moved around, it would have it would have got behind the the roll down door, and we, we wouldn't have been able to. Oh roll. yeah, so I had to tie that, that down, uh, and then finally we got it home, and then uh, he's got he's got his kids, and it was like you know free slave labor. <laughs> it's like get to it, come get on, light up, yeah, get up, yeah, 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 and they're all they're all kids, and you know rambunctious, and eight, you know, and so we had to like try, I tried to wrangle them up. And uh, they were asking questions, you know, because that's what kids do. And my brother was like, "Like, no questions. And just <laughs> grab it and get it out of there. We need this truck yeah, back yeah. by seven thirty, you know." And we finally got everything out. And then, um, and then he left. He took the truck. And then I was like helping, helping uh, Jennifer move. And you know, and then, and then finally, at one point, um, I was like, "I'm gonna need you guys' help, muscle wise, you know, because uh, the oldest boy he's starting to get a little, you know, stocky." You yeah. Know? And uh, so I was like, I need your help, buddy. And then, you know, and then, of course, it's like, it's like uh, they, they feel powerful, like, proud. yeah, yeah, yeah. They helped, you know. Yeah. So it was, it was cool. Uh, the next day, or actually, when I got home, I foam rolled. I, uh, my God, it, it hurt so bad. Everything sucked. Everything sucked for like, you do all that on the ground, foam rolling? Yep. Yeah. And I have a lacrosse ball to really get in there. Oh, oh yeah. It hurts so bad, but it hurts so good. It's like one of those weird things. You just move it around to where it feels yeah, good. Yeah, I, I you break know? up all Oh, you kind of know what you're doing, though. Yeah. You know, yeah. the muscles and stuff from your massage. Yeah, it sucks. It It, it, it is a, it, it, it's, it's a pain. It sucks. It sucks. But it's like if I don't do it, um, I'm going to fall asleep and then wake up. Where I can't move anything. Yeah, yeah, you'd you be know. so stiff. And then, then trying to do that foam roller stuff. Then, oh, it's worse because then all the fascia, like fascia, is just the stuff that connect, like basically like binds muscles. Yeah, uh, and you have to break it up when you use your muscles and stuff because if not, it'll cause it, issues. You know. Mm. Um. But yeah, but yeah, it, and oh man, that hot shower. Oh, that was that was better than a lot of things. I wouldn't say Hot better. Hot showers than... are are one of the best things. I read a I read a Reddit thread once, and it said like, "What were the best experiences you ever had?" And someone wrote, "I got to take a hot shower once, and it was like the greatest feeling." And I was like, "Once," but I wonder how many people have access to hot showers. How many people do you think? What in in, the, in, in this the world? country? Oh, in the world? Oh, yeah. The no, world, not in the, America. America. Yeah, the world's most... a different ball game. Yeah, there's there's people in the... No, in I mean the world, yeah. Yeah, there's people in this world that probably experience it only on special occasions, you know? Yeah. Well, um, that's what it seemed like this comment was, and that, uh, and that really made me think, because, like, you know, we we just get in the shower, you know? You're just like, hot yeah. shower is a standard, yeah. you know? Yeah, the only time we really, as Americans, really deal with issues with hot... Uh, not lack of showers is like when a hot water heater goes out. Yeah. And it's like Has that oh. happened to you before? Oh god, yeah. Yeah. I actually okay. had to help install the hot water heater that uh that's in my family's house. Oh wow. Yeah. Um that was cool. I felt like a man, dude. I felt, so, so basically my dad had a, a a buddy of his come over and he was like an electrician and a, and a, and a plumber. He uh, was at one point. He's not now. Yeah, but he knows. But he knows all the shit. And he goes, I can't. Well, actually, I think he was a current. He had his um, uh, current license for um, electrician, but not not everything was up to code. He yeah. was like, I'm just going to help you install this, but I can't do it because I still have my license for. So if I do this and this, and they find out, uh, it's oh yeah, you'll get in trouble. So he goes, but what I can do is help guide you. To do yeah, it. yeah. So he had me do it, but he just told me everything I needed to do. Oh, well, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, That's awesome. I mean, what a great thing to know how to do. I had a teacher in high school who told our class, uh, he said, who wants to be a millionaire when you grow up? And everyone raised their hand. Yeah. And uh, he said, become a plumber or electrician or, uh, you know, whatever else the trade things are. Yeah. He said, don't become a doctor or a lawyer. He said, and he gave this like whole speech about trades. Yeah. Here he was a teacher. Uh, but 
<laughs> but yeah. he was right, you know. Damn, Wait, so that guy was. So listen to this joke. Okay. He his uh, he used to wear his pants really high. This yeah. teacher, and uh, the running joke was uh, his name was Mister Malazchek, and uh, they said, "How does Mister Malazchek get his wallet out of his back pocket over his left shoulder?" <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, um, you gotta be careful doing that though, because uh, uh, I had an ex girlfriend whose mom used to make her wear her pants real high because oh, she yeah? was like a chubby girl, and it 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 did something to her like her stomach fat. Oh really? Yeah. So it's like it's oh it made it like a top fat and a yeah it, it, it almost two tiered it it made it two tiered yeah basically. she Cause... gave her a camel hump yeah essentially yeah <laughs> fuck that man God it's amazing. Um, I had a, so we moved when Kelly and I moved from San Diego to Raleigh. Yeah. We rented one of those cubes that you pack up. Oh, okay. So it's just, yeah. they deliver this cube in your driveway. Yeah. You pack it up and they pick up that cube. Same thing. You got to be able to close the door. Oh, like pods. I think they call a them pod. Yeah. 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 So we did that and we packed it up and it was like Tetris. We, we used every fucking hair in this of space it was like it was like head to toe like a wall of stuff and it, it was amazing because we, we didn't get a big one and then uh and then on the way we got to we got delivered to north carolina and we had movers yeah uh unpack it and um because we packed it up ourselves and we we're like well We'll treat ourselves to movers. Yeah. And one of the things that I didn't wrap up was my Santa Leroy, <laughs> my black Santa. Oh, shit. And all the all the movers were like, uh, these, guys, these are guys from Raleigh and Durham and stuff. And uh, that was fun. I was <laughs> like, you just put that anywhere. <laughs> it's good. Uh, uh, but, yeah, that was fun. One time I helped a friend move his whole apartment and then he said this was in san diego and he said i will help you move another time like when you have to move and i yeah. said okay and then years later i had to move and i called him and i said hey if you're free can you help me come move and he said yeah and he showed up and he had sunglasses on and uh he was with a friend who i didn't know and uh I said, just grab like these things or whatever. And he went over and picked up like a thing and he was walking all slow and he was just holding it up like this, like awkward. Yeah. And it turns out he was on acid. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> and I was like, just get the hell out of here. <laughs> I was like, useless. Yeah. Oh um, man. You, where do you want me to put the slug? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's talking to me. <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I actually I just being a, a stocky, big calved guy. Yeah, um, I was utilized for so many moves, so many moves. I know. Um, to the point where I I refuse to own a truck for that reason. I know pickup truck is a it's nice because any free stuff on marketplace wherever you know yeah. you have access to a lot of free things, but also yeah, people ask you to move. Yeah. And that sucks. And then, yeah, being a big guy or having any kind of strength, yeah, you're asked to move or help out, lift things. The only benefit I think to being fat is occasionally you get to you get shotgun in a car, yeah, for free. You know, yeah, that happened uh, not long ago. We <laughs> we were all riding together. I, I forget who who we were with, but it was like a bunch of us. And uh, I was oh I know I was I was hanging out with a friend and we all decided to drive from one place to another yeah because we all had like drinks and they were like i don't know what you guys drive and cool and i was sitting in the back and they're like why don't you why don't you sit up front like, yeah they're hey, trying to yeah. be all nice about it they're like yeah hey, you you can sit up front yeah and that's why like, i wanted oh. to in the first place but i didn't want to be a dick you know yeah uh it's then, funny they yeah they try they nice they nice you up yeah they're like it's, oh, i got nice grade yeah uh, nice graded <laughs> I had a. I just took. I rode with uh, Christina and Will and all them down oh, to. Uh, oh my god! <laughs> down to that. We haven't even talked about that yet. Caps. Oh yeah. my god. Yeah. Yeah, we could probably do a whole episode about that. Jesus um, Christ! But we. Yeah. By the way, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, that was all right. I uh, I went against a guy named Patrick. I want to say his name is. 
Um, oh, Sisk. Is that his name? Patrick? Yeah. 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 And he was funny. And I felt like we had a close audience clapping situation. Yeah. I, I, I heard you guys kind of got fucked. Uh, it was like, they seemed like they just didn't like, the crowd they, was like, fuck Jacksonville, you know? They were yeah, like, that, was the they, vibe, you know? that was that was what I heard too, was like, they didn't give you guys shit. Yeah, uh, yeah. But I, I also, um, yeah, and I like, the people in the front row were like 88 years old, you know? <laughs> and uh, I tried to riff and they were just looking at me like, they're like, I have three months of life left and I'm <laughs> listening to this. Uh, but it was cool. So I got to like meet him and a few other like local comics and stuff. Yeah. So I thought I had a very mediocre set because I was exhausted by the time I got there and I like really didn't want to be there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I really felt like I underperformed. Yeah. And I felt and I was bummed about it because there was a lot of comics there and I was like, yeah, I, I didn't uh, do well for myself. But then the audience vote thing came. And it was so close that that gave me like a little more confidence. Yeah. Or I felt like I started bad because I tried to riff and I just got yeah. nothing from the crowd. Yeah, that's what Christina told me was like uh, that you you should have won your round based off of votes and stuff. He, for he was like a, uh, he was funny. He was like uh, all the Orlando comics are like very polished. But I was saying to uh, Stephen Baker, I was like, I feel like Jacksonville is like more of like uh, it has like a more of like an independent raw like uh punk feel to it yeah in our comedy as opposed to orlando seems a lot more polished and sort of like networky yeah yeah, yeah. so it's it felt like also ne- you went against the the guy that books that club yeah i don't care i mean i, yeah, I he's was the like booker for that club yeah so like it was yeah. like yeah but really more more so than the actual show was I was upset with myself because on the way home, uh-huh. and I don't know if you heard about this already, because no. I had a, I had like an, a whole autistic blow up. <laughs> uh, we we're all on the way home and we we're all laughing about the whole experience and everything. Yeah. And then Will, uh, who I haven't really hung out with much outside of like just doing shows and stuff. Yeah. But uh, I always get along with him real well. They were like all excited about some comic book movie that was coming out, like a superhero movie. And uh, I forget which one. Yeah, yeah. Something that's coming out. Is yeah. there nerdy movie? So, yeah, whatever yeah. it was. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and he goes like, uh, him and Christina were talking about it. And then he was like, Dan, do you like comic book movies? And I should have been like, hey, here, have some decorum and realize that these people really like comic book movies. And I should squeeze any amount of positivity I feel about these movies and this stuff <laughs> yeah and insert it into this conversation to be friendly and social socially nice you know yeah, yeah. and instead <laughs> and i don't know why i guess i was just at that point in the night and i wasn't trying to be confrontational or anything but i was just like no i don't like comic book movies and actually anybody i was like i don't understand how people do because they're stupid and they're you they're formulaic and i just went on like a <laughs> little like two minute rant about how terrible they are yeah and then it was just like silence <laughs> we were just like all right <laughs> and i was like damn it <laughs> i was like i, I should have just pretended to be a nerd <laughs> i look like i would love those movies yeah and i just don't yeah it's a real bummer and then he said what do you do you like and i said i like like i listen to audiobooks and like just a real like non-fiction stuff yeah and he goes you hate fiction <laughs> and i was like that's so funny and i got i was like i know i'm wrong i was like i know i'm wrong i was like everybody likes it and i know it's good and i try to like it and i can't get myself to like <laughs> fantasy worlds and like worlds it's hard to get it's hard for me to get into a world unless it's grounded in reality yeah like Lord of the Rings or Game of Thrones or yeah, like dragon stuff. People love dragons and magic and shit. I hate it. I can't. But I, I, I give off the, you know, I should basically have like a fucking Harry Potter costume on at all times. Like the <laughs> way I look. Yeah, that's just, you know, that's the funny thing about like whenever um, we have discussions because I look the way I look. I look like I should feel the way you do about everything. And I'm yeah, like, yeah. magic is wonderful.
evil. <laughs> like, yeah, you're like, like superheroes are real. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I love wrestling. Yeah, exactly. It's real to me, damn it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I almost, you know what? And I've, I've, thought, I've really thought about this because you have like full control over what you look like. I don't know how to dress how I feel, you know, because yeah. I, I, that whatever skill set, fashion, whatever you want to call, yeah, that skill set, I dramatic, I really lack. I, uh, I have, I'm terrible at it. So I'll find like a thing that works and I'll just do that over and over again. Yeah. And I think I've whittled out or landed on like a nerdy sort of safe look. Yeah. Like nerdy, non-threatening look. Yeah. And I found that even though I don't feel this way, <clears throat> it almost acts as like a social disguise. Yeah. Because nobody, I feel non-threatening to everybody and I, uh, nobody, uh, I, uh, both men and women leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> you oh, know? That's, yeah. It's awesome. That's funny. I, uh, I, I, my fashion sense is based off of low self-esteem. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, I, I dress, I, if I'm not dressing for comfort, which is, which that's my favorite way to dress. Oh yeah. Me too. I yeah. love comfortable, but comfort. like my, my comfort, unfortunately looks like I'm a bouncer all the time. Yeah. It's like dark comfortable pants dark comfortable shirt dark comfortable shoes <laughs> pants with the calves cut out yeah it's, 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 it's just, yeah just, um so i have to base my uh outfit choices most of the times based on what people like that looks good on me yeah so i remember one time there was a girl i had a crush on and i wore a particular type of shirt uh they're called henley's they're like basically henley's? like it's like this this exact shirt this exact type of shirt. Oh, a shirt when it has uh, no no three collar, useless buttons. Yeah, no collar, and it's like it's and some of them have zippers, some of them have buttons that go all the way from further down. But it's it's. Oh, it's, I like a pullover with a short zipper. It's yeah, it, it's uh, but the, the, these are called Henleys, and I I she said I looked good in it. It looks oh, really yeah, good on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And I was like, and just note it, yeah. and I bought. 14 fucking Henleys and uh, pretty much the same style what a guy move. Yeah. You know? I was like, oh. I'm the same way though. I'm like, Oh uh, uh, yeah. You find a shirt that you're like, Oh, this shirt works. I buy six of them. There or, or, or if I have like a clone that works on me, they're like, well, this smells good on you. I'm like, cool. I will wear, I will bathe myself in this now. Yeah. Uh, I would baptize myself every day in this and, uh, uh, just to get that, that endorphin rush of, of someone complimenting me. Um, I'm like I'm glad I don't um, I'm not good at or like into fashion or that that shit but like yeah because it that seems like an endless uh, rabbit hole you know material is a materialistic fashion people yeah. who like like designer shit yeah that seems like a nightmare you know yeah you know the weird thing is I, I because of my love of thrift stores I've been able to score really nice name brand clothing yeah for nothing like uh, like these shoes right here. These are apparently these are, uh, like two hundred dollar like walking shoes. Oh yeah, I paid eight bucks for. It. Um, I have uh all my shoes I own now basically. It's just the those calf trainers from like East Bay. Yeah yeah remember? yeah two hundred dollar calf trainers. Yeah, yeah. That, that's what that's what secret is. Is do I, you remember I, those? There was like a platform on the bottom yes. of the shoe. Oh my god! And you like, and I, and I just laughed at it because I never needed those. I think that's that was on Seinfeld, wasn't it, Jimmy? I, I think so. Yeah, J- Jimmy. Tra- yeah, it was calf trainers. They were also. Yeah, I remember looking at those in East Bay, uh, <laughs> East Bay catalog. Dude, uh, East Bay used to. Ah oh, man, that was my favorite thing to, to get in the mail. Oh, so cool! God, damn it. All those shoes, and it, it was so funny because it was just a, it was just a wish catalog of things I could never. Afford. Oh yeah, yeah. You never you know, like. The, I think I think the my favorite thing was uh when I think my dad got a promotion in the Navy or whatever, and uh and I think we all did we all, all three of the all three of my brother and my sister we all, were all pretty studious yeah so we all we always had good report cards for the most part, uh, my brother more so than any of the other two, uh, my brother was a salutatorian oh um, cool and the only reason he wasn't valid Victorian was. He got caught plagiarizing a report or whatever mm. one semester, and they they were going to give him an F, but yeah. they gave him a D. But the girl that got valedictorian got like a B in that same class. Oh, okay. Or an A or B in that same class. Yeah, yeah. And then like, and then it was like one or two classes where she, like she got an A, he got a like a A minus or something like that. But Still, yeah, but yeah, but he was amazing. Fucking salutatorian. 
Um, but yeah, we, but all of us, like, especially in our formative years, like in like elementary school and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Just fucking. So middle school that year I had like a B on a roll and my dad got a promotion. And I remember my, my mom was like, pick out something out of each day. I'm like, no, 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 no. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. But they were like, but this page, and it was like the whole. I don't know if you remember, they had like three pages of clearance shoes. Yeah, everything, everything was marked down. Yeah, yeah. And I didn't give a shit. I was like, oh, I'm ordering from East Bay, <laughs> and uh, and it was so funny because like, I was given carte blanche from this one particular page, and it was all these like really nice ones, but I didn't really care for the color, the color um, that that they had. And it was just like one pair of shoes where I'm like, that's the one. And my mom's like, you sure about that? <laughs> like, there's this one, this one, this one used to be $200. And I was like, but I don't like the color on that one. It was like black and red. Oh, and yeah. I was really into NWO. Oh, cool. It was like NWO black and red. Yeah. So I had a dressing shirt and then I had that. Sh- and I wore black and red NWO stuff all the time with the black and red Nikes that I got. Oh, that's fun. Yeah. But just, it was just like, I got the order from East Bay, you know. Black and red reminded me. I just watched the Dark Side of the Ring, um, the Road Warriors, Legion of Doom. Oh fuck yeah, dude! That was a cool story because I I used to. They were my favorite um, tag team when I was young. Oh dude, the Road I, Warriors ruled. Um, and I think I just knew them as Legion of Doom. I guess. I don't oh know, yeah, yeah. Maybe they, I knew them as Road they, Warriors they, also, but. Yeah, they used to. Well, they used to come out to. Uh, I forgot what they. But used apparently, to when they by the time they got to WWF or WWE now. Yeah. Um. Hawk, the guy who was like always getting fucked up in, yeah. out of the two, yeah. was like really far gone by the time he they even got into the WWE. Yeah, I mean they, you could tell by their their build because they used to be so much more defined and muscular, yeah. and they were big, but they weren't like real cut. You know, yeah, like, yeah. Um, it's a, and then the one get the animal. Yeah, they interview him throughout the whole documentary, and he looks he's like a he's like someone you the, you know he now looks like a. You know, a plumber. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. He, oh, they all, they looks all like a lose, normal they, guy. They all lose their muscle mass. You yeah, know? it's wild. Um, but, but yeah, yeah they were amazing. They were so cool. I and still then, remember their their little entrance. Ooh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it, and I would laugh though because you ever seen the movie Ghost? Uh, yeah, once a long time ago. Okay, and I've seen a million parody. You know, comedy okay, so in the movie the Ghost, place. whenever one of the like people that are bad dies the demons come and grab them and take their soul to hell or whatever. Yeah. But it always come out with, it's like, and it sounds like the entrance to oh, the road funny. warriors. And I would laugh every time. Cause I'm like, Oh, the road warriors are coming. You know? <laughs> and then, then I get freaked out. Cause then when I was a kid, like the ghost and the demons and ghosts used to freak me out. Cause they would, they would come for the shadows. Yeah. And then get you. Yeah. Man. Yeah. That was good. That was a good one. I, uh, yeah, Dark Side of the Ring is awesome. Those are yeah. good. those are all really. I just I was fun. Uh, watching one uh, Marcus Bagwell recently. Uh, he was he was an NWO guy, um, but I I remember what him was his wrestling name? Buff, Buff Bagwell. Buff, ba- yeah. Buff Bagwell. Okay, I remember. I remember him specifically because I remember I remember him before all that. I remember him. He was in wrestling for this company called the WCCW, and he was the handsome stranger. <laughs> and he used to wear fucking, he used to wear like a little uh, 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 Lone Ranger mask. Oh, you know? God. And he could hand out roses to girls. Oh, that's so funny. And I remember, though, because, uh, then people were like, oh, that's, a, that's the handsome stranger, Marcus Bagwell. And I was like, "Oh, guy named Marcus wrestles," you know. <laughs> yeah, that was like my, that was one of the one of the, uh, besides the Ultimate Warrior uh, and the Road Warriors and stuff like that. That was like one of the guys that was like, "Oh, that guy." Yeah, his name was Marcus, and then he formed a tag team with a, a wrestler named Tuco Scorpio. And Tuco Scorpio was a black dude, and I I really got interested because it was Marcus, this wrestler named Marcus, Tuco Scorpio, who's who's his tag team partner, who's a black dude. And me and my cousin were close, and he's he's a uh, black uh, black of Pino. Oh yeah. So yeah, so I, I was like, that's us, that's us. We're that Afro Latino. Yeah, yeah. So it was like a light skinned guy and a black dude, and I was like, me and my cousin. That's fun. Like, so yeah, yeah, you could like pretend. Yeah. Uh, yeah, wrestling. That's fun. <laughs> you just celebrated an anniversary. I did one year wedding. Wedding anniversary. One year been, wedding. We've been together for almost ten, uh, well nine years. Yeah, a little over nine years. And you were what in Italy, right? Yeah, we got married in Italy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, sweet! I want to go back. 
Yeah. It's so cool that over there is very like slow pace of life. And you realize like uh, in America how f- how fast paced everything is. Yeah. Even like down, you know, we're like we're in the south and it's slower here, but it's not like by any means slow. And then like work wise in America, like everything's all about like producing constantly. Yeah. And it was cool there when you go and it's like things are slower and things are more about like uh, craft and artisanship and stuff. And like, yeah, they like markets, like people just shop and you buy the produce that's fresh that day. And yeah, you drink wine, you know, of course I was on vacation. So, you know, you have to work and shit. Yeah. But it's a nice, nice way to live. Yeah. That that's what, that's what I keep, uh, I keep being told is like, even in the South where notoriously we're slow paced down here, not so much anymore, like industry and, and, uh, consumerism is like really breached. Yeah. Know, the South. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. I know it's slower than it's still people in the South are more laid back than the Midwest may be, uh, up there too. But I can tell you from living in California, they are, will, they preach that they're laid back, but it's like much faster paced there. Yeah. So it's not as laid, but you know, yeah. People are like look laid back, but they're you know it's not. But yeah, uh, yeah it's interesting. It's like it's completely different. Um, and the weirdest thing I think over there versus here is like how old it is. So it's like thousands of years old there. Yeah. Versus America is like two hundred years old. So they were like you know, they're like people in America will be like, uh, look at this teacup. It was my grandmother's, and it's sixty years old. And they're like, look, look at this teacup. It's my great, 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 great grandmother's. It's <laughs> yeah. 1,200 years old. You know, it's like, <laughs> so it's like a massive difference. And, uh, but it's also cool being in uh, what I've realized too, because they are like, everything's like about tradition and it's like history and all that, you know, especially like the historical places, Rome and stuff. Yeah. It's very like, steeped in like that they're like they're like this is rome you know so you're supposed to be a certain way whereas america uh really like you could just do or be whatever you want you're not like we have like culture and you know all that shit but we're not really like restrained by anything yeah too much they're like really they're very strict with shit oh okay i didn't realize that they don't like american italian americans which was disappointing but (laughs) Uh, you don't like who I am? <laughs> they don't. Yeah, they're like we're like, uh, or they're f- they don't like our Italian food. You know what? We, uh, what we call Italian food is like a mishmash to them. Oh, gotcha. All their food's very simple. Yeah, but it's delicious. It's like you know, yeah, high quality ingredients, very simple. But it's fun. <laughs> but yeah, we don't like your cabbage de goo. We don't like it. Well, what what's a fun fact? Uh, a very popular dish over there is a uh, carbonara. Have you heard of that? Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's like guanciale, which is like Italian bacon and cheese and eggs, pecorino and eggs. And it came about, and they're very, very proud of that. Like in Rome, they're like carbonara. And they're like, you got to make carbonara the right way. And they yell at you <laughs> and they, you know, pasta, stuff, blah, blah, yuckety, yuckety. <laughs> but, and fuck America and blah blah blah. Yeah. It was a piece but of shit. It suck. Carbonara was invented because World War Two American over in Italy would ask them to make bacon, egg, and cheese. And they would they would say, "I want a bacon, egg, and cheese." And they kept asking for it. And yeah. the, the Italians, as taking this request, made a bacon, egg, and cheese pasta, which is what carbonara is. Yeah, and. And everyone was, you know, the Americans liked it and the Italians love it. And they're very proud of that. Yeah. But they're like, fuck America. But like we gave them their inspiration for what one of their most proud <laughs> dishes. <laughs> Isn't that fun? Yeah. So take Sorry. that. Also, tomatoes, very proud over there. Yeah. Are from the Americas, South America. So take that, Italy. Yeah. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> Put that in your carbonara and smoke it. You know? <laughs> I thought that was very funny, though. Yeah, because they're you know they love they love their carbonara, but that's an American inspiration. Yeah. Holy shit! I didn't know that. 
Yeah, like I didn't you, know it either. I learned history it lesson there. we just learned here, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah, one year of marriage. It's wonderful. It's work. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Relationships, you know? Yeah. Communication, all that stuff. That's cool. Yeah. I'm bad at it. I'm bad at showing emotions or, you know? It, it's hard to, it's hard as a guy. I don't know. Some guys are good at it, but I'm always like, uh, not that I was raised to be, uh, like, but that was sort of like the way, you know, like, yeah. a, like Northeast, they were like, it was like, uh, I feel like you could, t- if you talk to someone who grew up in like Boston or New York or anything, yeah, they're like, we repress our emotions we just stuff it into down. a fine anger. And that's why, you know, you have these outbursts and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I, what uh, I, do. I, I can't, I come up <laughs> in an environment like that. Um, but also I also come from an environment of people very emotional. Yeah. To the point where if everyone's emotional, then who's, who's level headed. Yeah, yeah. You know, um, and then also I was in a relationship, uh, several, couple, couple different relationships where uh, my emotions got weaponized against me. Oh yeah, that's not good. Yeah, so it's like Does that make you, you like want to not be. Yeah, you emotional? show some, you show some genuine emotion. You know, like you know, you feel sympathy or something, or let's say something breaks you. You know. Yeah. And and they're like, oh, well, you cr- crying? And like, you're a man. And you're like, well, okay. Well, then there goes that. I'll never fucking cry in front of anyone ever again. <laughs> yeah, you know, there, you, there goes that forever. Good luck getting <laughs> getting any fucking tears out of this fucking. I hole. know, God. <laughs> yeah, then you repress and you never cry, and then like a commercial will come on, and you'll just. Start oh, that's crying. me. That's me watching like puppy videos on fucking Instagram by yeah, myself yeah. at home. I'm just like <laughs> just crying to strangers. I know. Yeah, I love it when it. Well, an animal video will get me, but like, I love it when like, I love it when like a commercial or something like as benign as that. And I'll be like, or like, I'll watch like, uh, I don't know, just stuff. The, the worse or the more embarrassing it is, the more it makes me laugh, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause I never get emotional, you know? Yeah. And I'll be like, <laughs> I try to like convey emotion. I think it just doesn't come off. Yeah. It sucks cause I feel it, but I'm not emotional. Yeah. You know? Which is good in a lot of situations, but it's also, I don't know. It makes you, well, it, it, I know in some search, some circumstances, it, it makes you look like you're not human. Like you're like a fucking robot. Right. Yeah. Like, how can you not feel anything? I'm like, I just, also, I'm not really big on uh, doing emotions on cue. I'm not, a, I'm not a fucking, I'm not Daniel Day Lewis, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, uh, which is sad. I could probably, I could probably drum up emotions for a scene yeah. quicker than I c- can publicly express emotions for a certain thing in front of a group of people. Yeah. I could relate. I could fake it more than I can. Well, I'm a bad actor, but I would, I could only, I could only convey emotion if it's for being funny. If it's for, if the, if the purpose is being funny, I feel like I could conjure any emotion. Yeah. Yeah. But if the, if I was, if it was like conjure an emotion to be dramatic acting or whatever. Yeah. Oh, I could never. Yeah. Isn't that weird? I think no. it's because the end goal is that it's like a co- maybe it's a defense mechanism because the end goal is to be stupid or bad or yeah or make people laugh however that may be not that it's bad but you know I wonder why that is not yeah I I feel the same way but I think I can probably uh, drum up emotion for dramatic stuff too yeah I think for me emotions publicly I can convey emotions as long as the end goal is to be entertaining. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it were the same boat. It's just entertaining like I, is a good word, yeah, yeah, to use because it's like, yeah, you wanna, you gotta just make sure you're, you know, I don't know. Dramatic acting, I think, is dramatic acting seems hard because I feel like I would be so embarrassed or like, yeah, you know. But part of me is like, as long as I don't have to fucking watch it, because <laughs> yeah, like oh me, uh, you know, ugly crying in front of people, yeah. yeah. That would be a hard thing. Like I, just, I just still don't get people who can watch and listen to themselves and like be confident about it. <laughs> like, oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah, that's how I don't understand with like um, uh, everyone's clips, stand up clips. You know. Yeah. There's so many stand up clips that go out, and most of them are really bad. And you know, there's occasional ones that are good, but most of them, the bad ones, like people. I'm always like. Like you watch this and then you were like, let's just put it out there. But then I, you learn that it's, it's not about quality. It's about consistency. Yeah. If you want to like, 
accelerate all that social media shit. And that's at what point do you go uh, like all integrity is lost? <laughs> yeah. Know? To that, I agreed to do a 30 minute clean set at Murray Hill Theater. <laughs> With, Wait, who hit you up to do that? Uh, Mike. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Which I don't think I have to like dig in and or write jokes to make 30 minutes clean because I don't write. I don't I'm not a clean comic, but I have a. Yeah. yeah. I have a clean file. When? July or something. Okay, nice. Yeah. Okay, dude. That's a, that's a. Pretty... It was okay money, so I just agreed, and I was like, I'll just, I'll make it work, you know. But I'll it's tell a, it's a, it's a pretty historical little uh, place. It's been there for over twenty years. Oh, cool. Yeah. It, it uh, they used to be. Uh, they're like faith based. They're oh, okay. Faith-based. And um, when that's good. Years ago, when I was like in in that world more prevalent, um, I went there for a couple times for, to see like uh, Christian rock concerts. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow okay well yeah. i just i thought it was cool because it's, it's a theater but yeah. i was like man you know it's fun to agree to church clean i guess yeah it's church clean so yeah they've they've had a couple acts that are like tote the line a little bit so yeah it, it, it'll be fine um that's where that's actually the you know the improv theater that's in town yeah first that's coast. actually where they started before they had the theater that they have now, oh, they just they would out do of their there? Sto- they would do their shows there. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. I met the uh, one of the owners or the owner of First Coast at uh, Vusoir, and he said uh, he gave me like a he gave me a joke. Oh, really? Yeah, he said you should say, uh, "My last name is Venti. I'm named after a Starbucks drink I can't afford." <laughs> and I was like, "All right." <laughs> I, was like, I see you improv guy yeah I see. <laughs> it's funny i tried on stage didn't work but yeah <laughs> yeah because yeah it's, it's there, there's there's certain things that carry over to both worlds and there's certain things that don't i don't think that he was so nice I oh yeah like yeah him. no they're they're good they're i mean they're good for, for the, that the Quick old stuff. improv versus stand-ups you know so yeah. those worlds yeah but i love them Improv is good. I've had such fun, fun times doing that shit. Yeah. So sometimes I, I sometimes I, I uh, find myself like wanting to do improv again. Uh huh. Just because there's a there's a aspect of like negativity that that stand up carries, you know. Oh yeah. But then I remember why I don't fully dive into improv because there's an aspect of like Disney cast member energy that yes. I just can't. I can't. Yeah, you gotta pick which. Uh, I can't. I gotta be in. The, I gotta be in the middle. I can't. Yeah. I, a little bit of a little bit of spiciness and a little bit of hey. Yeah. It's, yeah. Th- yeah. Theater nerds versus psychopaths. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. Oh, I know. Gosh. Yeah. I can't. The improv like campiness is too much. Yeah. For me, and then like the le- the Scientology ishness of it, like the levels and like. Watching people do workshops and like, uh, like I'm in level two now, like what, you know, whatever it was like, yeah, yeah. I, w- I auditioned for a group. I never took a improv lesson, but I auditioned for a group and I got onto like a long form team. Yeah. And then we just started doing shows because they were already established. Um, but then I would like watch these improv theaters and they're like, all these people would go through like all these levels. It's like hundreds and hundreds of dollars, you know, yeah, all yeah. this time they spend doing it. And yeah. I was like, this is fucking crazy, you know? Like, yeah, yeah. But they're so committed, and then, you know, it's like Scientology. Like, if, if people <laughs> finish all the levels, they're just like, We're, we found a new level, <laughs> level eight, <laughs> or whatever. <laughs> and now Glip Glop can come yeah, you can could, get, get us. You could improv with Xenu. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, shit. Well, that's about it. Uh, <laughs> it's not fun. To pay for improv lessons, <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's a uh, it's it's cool to meet a improv girl and you date for like two months and then oh know, that, that's foolish and it's cool to be foolish hell yeah <laughs> improv boobs. <laughs>